All right, thanks for joining me. It's been a really long time since I made a video and it was one of those things I've tried making some videos and realized that I was just rehashing stuff I've already talked about. And so it kind of felt uninspired. Um, but there's something I'm doing today that um, kind of gearing up for spring, making plugs. I thought I would share with you guys, figuring you guys would get some value out of that. Um, not a ton of information out there and probably because it's not that complicated. It's the same if you're making grain spawn. Um, the only difference is you're using wooden plugs. So what I'm going to do is just kind of walk you through what I'm working on today. Uh, making about 3,000 plugs today um, for a batch of, I think it's going to be reishi and maitake is what I'm working on. Um, and show you kind of the different methods, I guess, that I use, um, which is pretty straightforward. And then how I'm working with um, creating some of the counts and you know, dealing with some of the larger volumes. Um, so I'm going to show you what I have in front of me today. I have a little helper, my son Desmond in the background. And he's holding on to a jar that I use for doing 200 counts. So if you're doing some smaller quantity size, you can do the smaller pints and those will hold about, uh, I wanna say, yeah, it's about 200 counts if I remember right. If you're working with the half gallon size jars, this is a jar of maitake plugs, uh, you can get about 500 in here. So if you wanna make it really simple to count out, you know that bang, I got 500 plugs in here, um, it's pretty straightforward. And then I also use filter patch bags for doing larger quantities or larger batches, which I have about 1,500 in here. So this is a new batch that's going and I use inoculated plugs to continue to propagate on more plugs. And so that's what you see in here is a few of these, a few of these plugs. Um, the only thing to note about the plugs, I soak these overnight and they become kind of a golden color after they've been hydrated. Uh, these are fluted dowels. They're always, I always get the 5 16 by one inch. Uh, those seem to be the best size. Those are pretty standard. I prefer the spiral ones. I ordered 15,000 when I ordered these plugs and these are the fluted ones. The fluted ones work fine. You know, you can see the difference. They just have a basically a straight spine and they're okay. They don't seem to, I don't know. It seems like the mycelium really likes the spiral ones for whatever reason, but they, they grow on these just the same for the most part. I just, if I had a preference, I would definitely choose a spiral. These just got sent to me wrong. So what happens when I'm soaking these, I end up counting them out dry weight. What I always do is I count out a hundred of them dry weight. And then from there, then I end up weighing those on a scale. I use, I have a couple different digital scales and one is a postal scale and the other one's a little bit heavier. I think this one goes up to 11 pounds and they're just handy to have because what you can do, you can measure out your weight. So I count out a hundred of these plugs. And then I know that you know they weigh uh, 72 grams. Then what I can do is then I can just, if I want count of 500, I just throw all my dry plugs. I go to something like 450 grams, if I remember right. And if I have 450 grams of plugs in my bowl, I know that I have 500 plugs. And then you can move those 500 plugs. I usually throw a couple extra in just to make sure that I err on the side of caution. Um, so when I sell packages of plugs, I always throw in a couple extra to make sure. I'm not, I'd rather give people too many than not enough. I don't want to be... I'd like to be known for that, if anything. So that's pretty much it. What happens next after you soak these and hydrate them, I'll do the same thing. I'll weigh these out on a scale um, because now that they're hydrated, they weigh a little bit more. And then I'll count out 100, I'll get my wet weight. And then from there, then I will transfer those in. Now today, because I'm doing about 3,000 plugs, I'll end up doing two bags. And I'm gonna be doing reishi and maitake and then uh, propagating some of those. It's something I ran out of, so trying to do that. And then from there, then you're gonna stick those in your pressure cooker, whatever you're doing, you know, whether they're jars or bags, uh, filter patch bags are the same ones I use for five pound blocks and um, growing mushrooms in. So it all works the same, they're a handy tool to have. And then from there you sterilize them and then just the same, you use your flow hood or whatever you're using to do your clean work and then you're just inoculating them and it uh, works out pretty slick. You let them go, these have been sterilized and then this is about, let's see, the fifth, so about four and a half days ago and you can see that once oxygen starts getting to those plugs, they start turning really nice white and fuzzy and uh, you know, it'll take another two or three weeks. Um, seems like maitake, uh, move pretty fast. Shiitake of all the spawn that I work with or the mycelium I work with, um, that one seems to be the slowest, but um, actually this is shiitake and this happens to be going, looks like pretty fast, but I have some other jars that seem to be going a little bit slower. But anyway, that's a side note. 
Um, so that's it. That's all I really had for you guys. I thought it was just something quick to share, what it looks like and how it works out. And, you know, I, I think the measuring the weight might be something that's useful. Um, I know it has been for me. I probably count weight more than I need to because I do it at every stage and I never write it down. So I'm always, every time I do a new batch, I'm doing the same thing over again. So it's a little redundant, but I always feel for me, it's a little safer and it doesn't take a whole lot of extra time. So. Uh, I hope that's something of value to you guys and uh, you know as always leave comments uh, let me know what you think um, I've been pretty excited about the uh, number of views and you know the feedback that I've gotten from you guys over the year and I uh, just kind of ex excited to see that happen so uh, thanks for watching and I uh, hope you guys have a good one thanks So just a quick bonus to the video, um, something I thought I should add on to the end was the actual just quick measuring out and then throwing in the pressure cooker. Maybe that's something you guys haven't seen before, so I thought I'd just show you quick. Might as well. Uh, so what I have here is actually just quickly weighing it out. Um, I have my two filter patch bags and just kind of evening out the weight. I know that they're about 3,000, um, about a 3,000 count, a little bit more than that, just because again, I like to throw a little extra in there. And so I'm just splitting the weight in this case, and I know that I'm going to end up with 1,500 plugs in each one. Um, so I'm pretty close, 2,200 grams. I like the grams because it's a little bit closer. This one's 2,172. And this one's about 2,205, so I'll just grab a few. Split it out. 2,183. 2,195. So just off by a couple. Most of that's probably just moisture weight. Even when I'm packaging, I do small packs of 100 because um, they're just easy to count out that way. And I do all that by weight as well. So when I'm um, starting to take out of here, I'll measure you know, whatever my myceliated weight is. So I'll count out 100 plugs for that initial run. And then I'll just, you know, it's 110 grams. Then I'll start loading all my bags with 110 grams. And then I know that I'm at, you know, I'll end up throwing in a couple extra. So I'll go to 115. This way I know that I'm getting a couple extra plugs and I'm not shorting anybody for my uh, hunter count. So maybe that's useful for you. Um, from there, these are gusseted bags. They fold up really nicely. All I need to do is uh, fold them up. I've never had a blowout. I've never had a bag explode. Um, I've heard about you know, putting tie back in there. Never needed to. I never had to worry about it. So all I do is fold these guys. I think this is a nice size. This ends up being about the same size, doing a 1500 count as the five pound blocks I do for kits and uh, also for just growing in indoors. Uh, I like doing that. The size just seems to work well. So I'll load this guy too. And I'll be done. So pull them over as such. Sometimes I'll use a plate or I'll use a knife or something just to hold the bag down. What I'm loading it into is actually an all-American pressure cooker. Uh, this is a 41 quart. I think they're probably one of the largest that are made. Um, lids are on somewhere. Got a handy temp dial. And I'll cook it at 15 PSI once I turn the stove on here and sterilize it. I do that for, you know, because there's not much in here, it'll get up to temp pretty quick. So up to 15 PSI, just about 250 degrees. It'll get there and I'll do that for about 60 minutes. Um, when I do straw in here, you know, I'll let that, usually takes a lot longer because it's such a large amount of mass and water that's in there. I'll give it at least a half hour to get up to temperature and then I'll cook it for at least an hour, maybe even an hour and a half, just because I want to make sure that my straw is sterilized. That's a personal preference. Uh, I think it's pretty consistent, so. But for these, it's, it take about 10, 15 minutes on the stove to get up to temp and then from there again, like 60 minutes to sterilize your plugs. And then once you're done, bring them out, work in front of your flow hood, whatever you're working in, inoculate them, and then you know, you're good to go. Seal them back up, use an impulse sealer, put them in your closet, wherever you want to store them, and let them go. Um, the thing to note, I do end up drying off my dowels a little bit more. I use a towel when I'm drying them off because you don't want a lot of excess moisture in here. There's a little bit of vapor, which is fine, but if there's standing water, that creates an area where bacteria can grow and you're gonna end up with contaminated plugs or contaminated spawn no matter what you're working with any standing water is a bad thing uh, just my ceiling can't grow and it'll drown so keep that in mind um, but again you do want some moisture in there is fine it can tolerate a lot but also it can, yeah, it can die so 
Uh, as always, again, if you guys have any questions, I thought I'd just add this because I thought it would be better and give you guys a little bit of a bonus, a little bit more extra information for you guys to use as you try new things out. And if you're watching this, you're probably on some sort of mushroom endeavor and um, can't hurt to have extra info. So I hope you guys enjoy. Thanks.